Hello and welcome to another edition of the C-Squared Podcast. This time it is Curtis and Aaliyah who are taking over the hosting duties with you. Today we have a very special guest. We have Krista from the band, Dialeth, who is going to be talking with us for the next 30 minutes or so about the band, uh, about a bunch of different things, about their recently released EP. And we're going to start it off with the first question from Aaliyah. Woo! Hey, Hey. Krista. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. To start things off, I just wanted to maybe get a summary of who you are, what you do, and maybe how you first got into metal and your first favorite bands. Okay, cool. Um, Well, I'm Krista. Uh, I am 28. Um, I live in Connecticut and um, I sing in the band Dialith. Um, and how I got into metal, um, really I started listening to like Evanescence when I was like 10, cause that was what I heard on the radio. Um, and then when my family finally switched from dial up to, um, DSL, we could, um, we could watch YouTube finally. And so I looked up Evanescence on YouTube and it led me to Nightwish's Nemo video and from there I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole and um, found a ton of new bands um, from uh, mostly from Scandinavia and Holland um, and I was hooked Um, and then there was a second part to that question right (laughs) Uh, some of your first favorite bands oh my first favorite Um, Within Temptation um Nightwish, Tristania, uh, Camelot. Um, those were the those were the big ones when I was like 14, 15. Very solid choices. <laughs> and how did you start the band? I heard that you just made a Craigslist post. Yeah. Um, so when I graduated college, um, I'd always kind of wanted to start a band, and each time I did, it kind of just failed. Um, so I, uh, put a, once I graduated college, I put a Craigslist ad up cause I was like, if I don't do this now, it's never going to happen. So, um, and then Alistair answered, um, and I, and he was kind of perfect. Like I really didn't expect to find somebody my age in the next town over who was, uh, such a good guitarist and, and was really talented at songwriting. So it was kind of uh it was it was really cool (laughs) yeah it seems like such a good match um was there um a moment in time that you remember that was like a catalyst for you making that post or was it just graduating college was the trigger yeah um I think it was just uh it it was just something I'd wanted to do and and like you you know when you first graduate college you're kind of lost because you're like oh well what do I do now like I have to find a job and I have to make all new friends and um a band is a very social thing so I was like might as might as well try it and see if I can you know do something I've always wanted to do and make some friends while you while you do it. Mm -hmm. Did you always want to be a singer or was that like a later in life sort of thing? Um I mean I don't uh I, I've always been singing. I've, I've sung since I was really, really young. Um, and I was always in choirs growing up. Um, and yeah, I, when I was, uh, when I was younger, I was like, okay, if, if I basically, uh, I always, I always joke that like, I wanted to be Sharon Denadel, um, because I saw the, uh, Heart of Everything tour when they toured the U.S. And, um, that was, that was, uh, <laughs> my uh that I was like okay I want to do this <laughs> yeah yeah so that's so funny I saw well within temptation came on the uh eh, kind of offensively named hot chicks of metal tour first oh, when was that it was in 2007 really and it was they were opening for lacuna coil and like a couple other bands and I saw them live and that was when I started my college band which is no longer a thing but yeah it was same band same time frame so yeah (laughs) um I was looking into your band name and it's you said it means through stone Mm -hmm. and I noticed that you 
use a lot of leaf symbols in their messaging and imagery. What does this symbolize for you? Um, so we were, uh, Alistair and I, uh, we were, we're big like into the environment and like climate change kind of scares the both of us a lot. So we were, um, so we had, uh, we were like, oh, well, let's make the theme of it very um, nature oriented. And um, through stone um, was a was a name that Alistair came up with. Um, we kind of when, whenever we're asked about it, we're, we we always say that um, through stone, like you can always uh, like hardy plants can grow like through concrete and through stone, and um, so it kind of uh, brings forth that kind of imagery. Um, and uh, Extinction Six, of course, um, is all about climate change and um, nature uh, taking over after. So um, de it definitely kind of ties into our theme. Can I do a follow up, Lilia? Yeah, I was going to ask Curtis. Do you want to ask a question? I, I do. I do. I was trying. I was trying not to interrupt though. So just, just, just as a follow up question, just on the uh, theme. So are not all of your songs are environmentally focused though, correct? No, not all of them. Um, we just have, it's just kind of a, a motif that, that runs through a lot of, a lot of our music. Um, so uh, I, Extinction Six, um, it has, uh, it's kind of the biggest one that I, that, um, I'm sorry, I'm not a very good speaker. Um, <laughs> Extinction Six is the one that kind of, uh, is the big, the big climate change, uh, and it's also the longest song on the album. And um, if you look at the cover of Extinction Six, um, it has that uh, that kind of crumbling temple, and the the human skull, and the nature is taking over that temple. Um, and um, Catalyst, Break the Chains, they all have they all have a bit to do with with nature as well. And then um, the on the EPs um, that are upcoming, I was I don't know if you're aware, but Atrophy is the first of three. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the next couple, it, it, it's a cycle of EPs. So they each have their own seasonal theme. Nice. So I got, oh, one, I Go got one, one more for her and then I'll let you do your next one. So just out of curiosity, do you find that because it's not usually like for your genre to be more focused on environmental type things, at least I haven't found it to be. Do you find that to make it, do you, do you find that kind of makes it more difficult to get across to prospective fans or does it not really make a difference? Cause there's usually like more fantasy theme I find in your genre at least. Um, definitely in our genre, there's a big fantasy theme. I don't think it, I don't think it's hard to come across to fans though. Um, I think the the lyrics are pretty straightforward, um, and um, with In Temptation, um, to to harken back to that, they had their their first album uh, or their second album, sorry, um, was was called Mother Earth, um, and they had a lot of environmental themes and um, sure. yeah, and I think in metal, I I do think that um, a lot of a lot of bands uh, do use it as a lyrical theme, even if they're not specifically symphonic power metal band yep. i i think that it's a it's a big one in metal in general agreed okay i'm good yeah and uh within temptation just overall i feel like they they're commenting on social things all throughout their discography so and they're yeah. one of the biggest symphonic metal bands historically so um what was my next Oh, so you mentioned Sharon Donatel and Tarja and um, a couple other people in your interviews before as being vocal influences, but I was just wondering if you might have a vocal influence or two that people might be surprised by, maybe outside of the genre, a little more unexpected? Um, outside of the genre? Um, so when I was a teenager, I was a big Emily Autumn fan. Um, and, uh, so I wouldn't say that she's a big vocal influence, um, cause she has a, she's a very unique voice. Um, yeah, 
and uh, it's it's very different than mine. Um, outside of the genre, I really like. Hmm, I do listen to stuff out of the genre. It's just like calling them up or like from memory. Um, there's this there's this um, this musician uh, La Femme Pandu. Um, has kind of like a, a jazzy voice that I really love that sometimes I try to emulate. Um, lately, I've really been trying to um, put a lot more power in my voice. Um, so I've actually, I've actually really been trying to um, uh, emulate Britney Slays from Unleash the Archers because I just think she's an incredible singer. Um, oh, she has a very different voice than me. Great. So um, I. I was was working with a voice teacher um, before the pandemic uh, to try and um, to try and learn how to how to belt better, um, and it's just that with the pandemic, it, it is kind of lessening now. Um, but getting back into it is a <laughs> yeah <but> yeah. <laughs> and voice lessons are really hard to do digitally because you can't see the body and like. Yeah, the whole chain of air, column of air, as they call it, I believe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I understand how that could put a damper on things. Um, but yeah, Brittany is an amazing vocalist. Um, congratulations on your new EP, Atrophy, which just came out in July, and everybody needs to go check it out because every single song is awesome. Um, yeah. What are the key evolutions you hope people hear on this EP as compared to Extinction Six? Key evolutions. Um, hmm. I definitely feel like my voice is stronger on this one. Um, like I said, I was working with a voice teacher um, to put uh, more power in my voice, and that was kind of the biggest thing. And I definitely, listening back to it, I'm like, oh, okay, I really like. I, I, I do like the power that's in this as opposed to Extinction 6 where sometimes I'm like, oh, I could have, it could have been bigger here or, uh, or something like that. Um, as far as maybe the songwriting goes, um, I think maybe the lyrics are a bit more, a bit stronger. Um, definitely on, on something like uh, Sweet as Wine. Um, Undertow, um, I was super proud of Undertow because that was, um, I, that whole like ending vocal line was something that like I wrote and I was like, oh, I love this. So that was, that was kind of big for me. Um, uh, the, the ending vocal line, sorry, not, not like the whole ending of Undertow. Um, and yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Curtis, do you have anything to interject? I can't see you. So. Yeah, sorry, I, I was I was on mute there. Um, I, well, I mean, I'm not really sure if I have any questions about the EP itself. Other, than, oh, I know. Uh, who did your art? The art is fantastic. Um, it's the same woman who did Extinction Six. Um, her name is Marta Sokolowska. Uh, she is from Poland. Um, her Instagram is at Ink and Thorns, um, and she's excellent. Um, if you're looking for an album cover, uh, definitely, definitely hit her up. And one question I had about it, how come you used like a winter theme when it came out in summer? Just out of curiosity, I was wondering about that. If you, if there was a reasoning behind this. Um, so it was always going to have a winter theme. Uh, we weren't sure when it was going to come out. It just sure. kind of happened that it came out in summer. Um, sure. Yeah, so uh, each, each EP in this cycle is going to have uh, a seasonal um, a, a seasonal theme and um, it just this just happened to come out in the summer. Fair. I was I was wondering about that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've done my follow up, Aaliyah. Okay. Well, then I want to move to asking about your music video. What was the filming like? How was the setup? Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Uh, that music video was a lot of fun. Um, we worked with um, Eric DiCarlo. Um, he is uh, excellent for music videos. We'll be working with him again soon. Um, and we uh, went to this place in upstate New York. We just rented an Airbnb campsite. Uh -huh. 
Um, and uh, the woman who owned it showed us this stone quarry that was on the property. We were like, this looks fantastic. So um, we shot it there. Um, it didn't take long at all. I think total, we were there for maybe four or five hours. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, he's, Eric DiCarlo is super professional. Um, and we had, we had a great time working with him. Um, so excited to work with him again. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's really good that you can find a, how did you find him? Um, Alistair found him. I think he was just watching YouTube videos and music videos and uh, he was, uh, whichever ones he liked, he was looking at um, who the videographer was. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. I have a follow-up question just about the video. Um, do you find that videos actually help to get you new listeners or do you feel like it's more something just for your fans, just out of curiosity? A hundred percent helps us get, get new listeners. Um, we use YouTube ads. Um, those have really worked out for us. And um, it's, you can reach so many people like putting a hundred dollars into a YouTube ad. Um, and and it, it does translate into um, people getting, uh, people buying stuff. Um, we released as soon as we released that uh, music video, we had people going to the band camp and pre-ordering the EP and um, shirts. Um, definitely, uh, it definitely helps get new fans, especially for a band like us, because we're much smaller um, mm -hmm. and we don't have access to a lot of like connections that bigger bands have. Oh, I got one more follow-up because I just looked to see how many views you got in the last two months using your ads. I was curious about that. So mm -hmm. it looks like got actually more on the new video than you did on the sound of your voice so did you for people that are listening um did you guys do the ads yourself did you hire someone or how did you do that because that's pretty effective to get that many views in two months um so uh, mark uh alistair did those uh, uh, mark mark did the facebook ads and alistair did the youtube ads um so those were um yeah, those were done by the band. Cool. Um, and do you know the approximate budget it took to get that? Or are you willing to say or not? The, up to you. Um, I don't I don't know the exact budget. I'm no thinking it might have been around 300. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna my end, Aaliyah. Yeah. I would just want to say that I think that for for music for bands like I've discovered so many bands on YouTube from YouTube recommendations. Yeah. And it's just like it's very natural for us metalheads to discover music that way, at least in our generation. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the younger younger folks, but <laughs> <laughs> our age and older, it's very very common to discover bands on YouTube. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um so good job on that. Thanks. One thing I did want to say too is I was just looking through the comments and there were just for anybody who's listening, there's actual people that had said that they watched the video due to their app. If anybody's curious about the effectiveness of the YouTube app, just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. People uh yeah, it's it's actually kind of funny because people are like, this is the first time I've ever liked a YouTube ad or something like that, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about any, I know that um, tours and live performances are kind of tenuous at best right now, but do you have any plans to have live shows or do a little mini tour in support of your EPs or the EP cycle? We do have one show lined up. Uh, it's a Halloween show, so I'm actually pretty excited about that because I want to dress up. Um, that would be fun. Um, uh, other than that, we don't really have plans. Um, we are kind of buckling down and writing that, or finishing up writing the second EP uh, and the third one, the, the follow-up to that. Um, so um, yeah, we really don't have plans for, for shows just because it's, we, we tend to think that our time is better spent writing and recording and uh, shooting videos than it really is um, playing playing local shows and stuff like that. Okay. Well, if you ever come to Chicago, 
myself and my band, as many of us as can, will come out for sure. <laughs> we would love to go to Chicago. We always talk about where we'd want to go, but it's it's just the logistics of getting there. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Well, I think I've got all of my uh, music related questions wrapped up. Okay. Curtis, do you have any follow ups? I, I do actually. One 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 magic question that is always asked in almost any of these interviews, which is basically, um, are you looking to ever try to get signed by a label or not? Um, at first, you know, we were kind of against it um, mm -hmm. because we we're like, well, what can a label really offer us that we can't do ourselves? Yeah. Um, lately, uh, like for the EP, um, we were trying to see if there was anybody we could do just a distribution deal with, like, because it's so expensive to ship to Europe and a lot of, we get a lot of orders from Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's not, uh, it's not really possible without a label. Um, it might be something that we'll look into in the future, but um, it, it does make us nervous as I'm pretty sure a lot of, uh, a lot of bands are nervous about signing with a label. Um, but it, um, it's not something that we're like totally against anymore. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Then I'm done my music related questions too, I think. Cool. Yeah. Well, then I just have uh, a beverage related question. Do you prefer coffee or tea? Coffee. All right. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> How do you drink your coffee? Uh, as sugary as possible, cream and sugar. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <night. laughs> I can't do it. Um, <laughs> I got a question though. So, okay. So, when, when you do drink your coffee, though, um, is it usually flavored as well, or is it just just with the sugar? Because if you say flavored, I'm going to have, we're going to. Um, I'm with, I'm with you. I'm, okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, it sometimes is flavored, yes. <laughs> blueberry, blueberry coffee, yeah, big fan. Blueberry, huh? <laughs> mm. Interesting. Interesting choice. Um, actually. One other question for uh, for if you're, it's okay, Leah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, and it is and is actually a related question. So, what what would be, in your opinion, your guys's best song that you guys have put put out to date? Oh, exactly. in your own opinion, your own opinion, yeah. Okay. Um, I I do think Extinction Six is kind of like uh it, it's sort of like the the crowning jewel at the moment um it is it's so long and it contains um so much uh blood sweat and tears uh and um it was we did perform it once um at our release show and mm -hmm. that was it was a lot of fun to perform um also it contains my highest note in there um I, yeah, I definitely think Extinction Six. Sorry, there's what, like motorcycles. <laughs> no worries. What about from a fan perspective? What do you think is the fan favorite song out of everything you guys have done? Fan favorite is um, either of the two singles, Sound of Your Voice, or Ignite the Sky, or Catalyst. We got a lot of good feedback on Catalyst. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, do we have any more questions, Leah? I don't have any. Cool. Chris, did you have any questions for us? Ooh. Um, hmm, uh, no pressure. Yeah. No pressure whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't think of any. <laughs> cool. All right, then. So thank you very much for coming on. We really, really appreciated it. And yeah, thank you. I think we have a new tagline, tagline for the end of the show, don't we, Olivia? Oh, yeah. Well, until next time, make like a bull and throw up those horns. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.